It's a big case making national headlines, so we want to bring in criminal defense attorney Joseph Tully to talk more about it. Welcome to Alex News. Thank you for having me. So uh, what are some possible next steps to all of this? Perhaps some civil cases or even some appeals coming from Harris? Well, um, there certainly will be uh, civil cases, I would imagine, coming. Um, the victims, you have the right to restitution in a criminal case, but they will also pursue uh, civil damages for, for you know, emotional damage and, uh, and, and suffering as victims. In terms of a, an appeal, that may or may not be the case. And the reason why is prior to the plea agreement, um, Mr. Harris was facing a maximum of, of 30 years in prison. And so by taking this plea agreement, he got a much lighter sentence. He got 12 years in custody followed by eight years supervised release. So he may not want to upset that op apple cart by filing a, a, an appeal. Yeah, thank you for giving us, that, giving us that context. I know it's on the minds of a lot of people out there. We hear about those sorts of things happening uh, all the time. Uh, now, in a case where there's digital evidence, direct messages, images, timestamps, you know, what else is there left for a criminal defense attorney to do at that point? Sure. So um, when, again, think of criminal defense attorneys like surgeons at the county hospital. You don't necessarily choose your clients. You get your client, whether they're the, you know, the, the robber at the bank or the teller or a customer in, in a bank shoot up, you operate on that person and you do so ethically. So if, if the evidence proves that your client is guilty or that the government can prove the case in, in court, then you shift into mitigation mode. How do I mitigate the sentence? Yes, he is guilty. Is he guilty of everything that they charged? Maybe he's not guilty of everything. Maybe they have strong uh, evidence as to this charge, but not this charge. Maybe there's uh, mitigating evidence in terms of the sentencing. Uh, we're here, they brought up that Mr. Harris himself was abused uh, by an older person when he was younger, um, doing basically he was following out the exact same pattern that he was exposed to as a child. Now, just a few moments ago, you talked about how uh, he, he previously faced an even longer sentence uh, in, under previous circumstances. So I'm glad you mentioned that uh, his attorney's job is to, I guess, kind of manage the sentencing. With that being said, prosecutors, I understand, were going for 15 years given the current circumstances, and instead Harris got 12 years and eight years of supervised release. Is that unusual in this type of case? It's not unusual. Uh, we saw something very similar in the Ghislaine Maxwell uh, case where, you know, the, the prosecution um, seeks to get the highest number they can. The defense seeks to get the lowest number they can. And the judge will more often than not mostly side with the prosecution, but they, the judge did temper it a little bit, um, not giving them everything. Instead of 15 that they were asking for, the judge gave them 12. So these types of cases extend far beyond just one person, especially when they get this much attention. So I have to ask you, such a high profile verdict and a high profile sentence, you know, what kind of a message does that send to the perpetrators and the victims who are still out there? Well, I, I think it just sends a message that, hey, you know, I, I think that there is a good argument in, in you know, by the defense attorneys for Mr. Harris that this was normal in his mind. You know, he had been through this as a child and this was just what he was taught. This was in, in a perverse way. This what is what he learned was normal. This sends a loud message. This is not normal. Sex and children, you know, there, there should be no correlation between the two. Um, a, a minor should not be exposed to sexual information or sexualized by an adult. Yeah, and I think uh, also it shows that the victims were heard and they were listened to. I think that's very important as well. Criminal Defense Attorney Joseph yes. Tully, thank you so much for coming on to talk to us about it today. Thank you, Eric.